And for some post-game reaction, let's go to Dave Roberts, the Dodgers manager. It seemed like a pretty clear-cut choice in the fourth uh, between Walker and Vesia for Rosario, maybe even for the pinch hitter. Take us through that decision. Um, I, I just felt right there the way Walker was throwing. Um, I expected him to keep going, and uh, the stuff wasn't compromised. Uh, There's a walk to Darno, um, then the broken bat double, and I just felt that he had enough stuff uh, to get through that and to keep going. Um, and uh, he got ahead 0-2, and we just couldn't put him away. Does his big game reputation in that situation sort of factor too? Um, I just felt in that moment uh, he's, he was the best option. Um, I, I think that you're looking at the fourth inning and, and where Walker, how he's throwing the baseball, I felt he was the best option. And, um, you know, with what he did this year, uh, he, he's been, he was amazing. And uh, right there, again, we got ahead and we just couldn't put him away. And you got to give credit to Rosario, who put a great swing on a one two cutter in or whatever it was. Okay. Down in front here, Juan. Hey, Dave, what was kind of your message to the guys after that? Uh, the message was, um, you know, I, I think that obviously we didn't. First off, let me just congratulate uh, the Braves, um, the entire organization, um, Brian, his staff, um, Alex, uh, his staff, and, and what they did, the players, coaches, those guys did a fantastic job, and uh, they beat us in a series. Um, so wish them well. I think for my message to our guys, it was basically, um, it was a tremendous season. It was a heck of a year. Um, going through a lot of different things that we went through that no one talked about, no one needed to talk about, and uh, didn't let it affect our performance. And that's something I was proud of. Um, to win 106 games, to go through a wild card game, to then be pushed in a five game series against a division rival, to come out of that and to be two wins away from going to the World Series. Uh, I think for me, um, I wanted those guys to be proud of that because um, the entire organization, not just the guys in the room, you know, there's people that all across our organization that worked really hard for this season. And to say that it was a lost season or a wasted season or anything, um, you've never been in a major league clubhouse and understands the sacrifices, understand the sacrifice that people make. So. It's still not lost on any of us that we didn't accomplish our goal. Um, but for me, I'm giving credit to the Braves because they outplayed us, plain and simple. Down on the right, Fabian. Hey, Dave, you mentioned it was the cutter that Rosario got to. What did you think of that sequence? It seemed like you, they were going hard. Like we had some. You know, um, obviously that's a pitch that you know Walker feels good with, but certainly you can tell that Rosario was sped up and. You know, I don't want to second guess a sequence, but certainly, you know, we could have done different things, um, but we didn't. And, and um, but certainly he was on the hard stuff. Yeah. And I know we've asked you about the offense, but did you feel like you guys were building something there in the seventh uh, before obviously Albert and that three spot came up? I did. I, I thought they were good at bats and then Pollock keeping the ball fair. I thought that that was a chance um, for us to get to Jackson, which we did. And, and Brian went to Matzik and we just didn't have an answer for him. But uh that was a big opportunity that we just couldn't, you know, even push one across. But uh, again, Matzik made pitches when he needed to. Next question, Mike, on the right. I don't know how much you've seen Rosario over the years, but just how much of a beast was he in this series? I'm sure he's holding the MVP trophy of the of the CS. Uh, we just couldn't figure him out. Uh, he beat us the other way. He beat us to the pool side. Uh, he got hits off lefties, off righties. Uh, we tried to spin him. We got, went hard. We just didn't have an answer for him. And when you've got that big guy looming behind him, it, it's just kind of tough to, to pitch around him, who was clearly hot. But yeah, we just didn't have an answer for him. On the left, Bill. Dave, you mentioned all the team went through to get this far. You also lost a lot of important people along the way. Did you just feel like you ran out of gas tonight? I hate conceding that. Uh, I just, I just felt that we had the players that were active that could still win this series. Um, we were ready to play through October. Uh, we just didn't get it done. But when you take hits like we took, um, they're still, you know, our best. I, I don't know. It's just 
uh, it, it's tough because I don't want to take anything away from the Braves. Um, they beat us in a series. Um, we put our best foot forward. We fought. Um, and they beat us in a series. Right there in the middle. Hey, Dave. What did you think of Ian Anderson and his changeup? Did they kind of get you guys off balance early in the game, considering the strikeouts that he had? And what kind of adjustment do you think you guys could have made for, as a difference? Um, I thought the, the one thing, um, I, I wouldn't say it caught us off guard. I think a little bit the adjustment that they did make, uh, and I, again, I'm seeing it from the side. I thought that they went in with the fastball more than he typically does, where usually it's the fastball or the changeup down below in to the right-handed where he mixed it up with that lane by throwing a fastball to keep us honest a little bit. Um, so, like I said, we had our chance, um, but you got to give credit. Ian pitched a, pitch a nice ball game. Okay, down in front here, Juan. D Dave, this core has accomplished basically everything together. Um, I know this is kind of out of your control, but there's, there's, a, there's a lot of roster decisions this winter. C can you even process the fact that this might be the last time this group is, is together? Um, that's a fair question. Um, a, a lot's going to be happening this winter. Um, I think part of the, the great thing about um, – players and service time is you get to a chance to choose where you want to play and uh, earn what you want to earn. Um, so we have some guys that are free agents um, and we all know who they are. So potentially to not see those guys back, it's sort of a changing of the guard. Um, if they're not back, whoever's not back, I'm certainly going to miss them personally and our team's going to miss them. Um, the six years that I've been here, it's been a core group of guys that potentially could be turned over um, this winter. I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I'm not looking forward to it. They're, they're, they're great players and great men, and I wish we could have won another one uh, with, the, with this group. Right in front of you, Mike. Dave, to piggyback off that a little bit, a lot of those guys are future Hall of Famers. Did you have any private talks with them at all after this game in case, like you said, you might not see him again? And then now that it's done, Cody's complete turnaround uh, from the regular season, the postseason, I thought that was a great at-bat going to beat the shift there to get that first run in. What can you say about what he did in the two different seasons? Cody, Cody, it was it was great. And we've talked about it for you know recently. And uh, it's something that, I think he's going to look back and be very proud of himself and, and how he overcame such crazy adversity. Um, and he's going to be better for it. Um, as far as uh, the message, I gave the opportunity to some players to talk uh, to the guys, and there's no script. You don't plan for this talk, you know, losing an elimination game. So uh, Clayton, Justin, Albert, um, Max, said a few things, but I think the thing that landed with me is, uh, you know, Albert talking about this group of guys that how special it was. AJ, you're on the left. Dave, dating to that decision to use Max when you did in the NLDS, it seemed like your pitching staff was kind of up against it this whole series in terms of short rest and, and some guys battling through arm stuff. How do you, how do you look at that in retrospect now? And, and was there anything to do differently there or is it just kind of the way the series unfolded? Well, um, in, in retrospect, you know, I, I, and if you could guarantee that we could win game five um, with someone else, I would have used someone else different. Um, I just think in the moment, talking to coaches, staff, and, and in particular Max, and having done that, and a veteran player who I trust, um, there's a point that you just got to trust the player, and, and, I, and I trusted Max. So um, it, it just didn't work out. But, yeah, we, we were kind of behind it and fighting an uphill battle, you know, this entire series. Um, and But I, I, I really believe, regardless, we got beat. I mean, the Braves played a heck of a series. I think offensively they game-planned against us really well. Um, defensively or pitching-wise, I think that they prepared for our hitters really well. Anything else for Doc? Doc, as always, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts gracious in defeat tough to admit defeat but very classy remarks about the fact that they did lose this series the Atlanta Braves getting congratulations as they advanced to the World Series so 
The Dodgers season ties a franchise record with 106 regular season wins and it comes to an end in the championship series. Their attempt to become the first team to win back-to-back -back World Series titles since the Yankees 3 P comes to an end. And you look at the most wins in franchise history and they just cannot get over the hump. They lost the World Series twice in 53 and in 2017 after recording 104, 105 wins. Lost the division series in 2019 with 106 and in 2021 go out in the NLCS. More post-game reaction as the Braves advance to the World Series. Here is their manager, Brian Snitker. That 9-0 road trip, you know, we had nine, we played nine games against teams that you're supposed to beat, which is really hard to do. I mean, there's a lot of teams in the division that went on those, and, and it's easy to lose those games, too. But we won. Now that's something that just, you just don't do. And I think that was a big thing that kind of kicked us ahead a little bit. Brian, at the start of the year, you guys were tagged as a potential World Series team, and obviously and a lot of stuff went wrong after that. The fact that you're going to be there now, does it almost make it sweeter? Yeah. Because no, I said this when – I know Alex and I talked about this. When we won this division, it was like this is probably the most gratifying one of the four. Um, and just for everything that we went through, it, it maybe with individual players, with injuries, um, just uh, trying to get the thing, uh, you know – on track, um, <clears throat> so th th this is really special right now. With the, with the, I'm so proud of this group of guys. And then following up something earlier uh, about your emotions, you said just a lot of things went through your mind. Obviously, you've had yeah. an incredible journey yourself. Did you have certain pictures that went through your mind of your career at that moment? Yeah, you know, I or? thought of Ronnie. I mean, everything that she – I know that she's been real emotional through a lot of this, um, and rightly so. I mean, she's the one that drug our kids all over the southeast, and I'd leave in February and come home in September, and she'd hold a job and cheerleading and baseball and all that. And, and um, you know, it, it was uh, a lot of that stuff. You know, the kids setting up a pro shop in Myrtle Beach and my daughter getting on a chair and singing, you know, root, root, root for my daddy's team at the seventh inning stretch. And, um, <clears throat> Troy, who, you know, I said, I told somebody, it's like, Snickers are going to have a world series trophy in their house here. And I don't know who's going to own it, but we're going to have one. So <laughs> that's a pretty cool thing too. Okay. <clears throat> far left in the back. That the job that your bullpen did today, especially the lefties, talk about that and how big yeah. of an asset that'll be going forward in the series. No, I think huge. I mean, our lefties were our, our bullpen was unbelievable this whole series. Um, what Minter and Masick did today was just phenomenal, phenomenal, especially. And Masick's been doing it the entire series. Um, you know, I, I said I'd be nice. I'd like to cut that MVP thing up and give him a little piece of it because that, that guy was just spectacular the, the whole series. Minter, you know, pulled down two innings the other day, pulled down two innings today. He's been throwing really, you know, all of them have just, well, they've just been so, so good. Um, and, you know, it was a big hit by AD to kind of keep the, the line moving there in the, the inning that Eddie hit the homer. So, um, but the bullpen, them guys, like I say, for, they had two days off, which was awesome. Now they're going to get two more off, which is even better. Because, um, you know, because th those guys have been huge for us the last six weeks of the season when we were in that win mode where we had to win in order to make this happen. Okay. Mark? Snit, you think about those three guys. A.J. had to go back to the Myers this year. Rosario was hurt when you got him. You don't know what he's got yeah. to offer. Um, and, you know, Matt Sick, you last year you said, what about that lefty? Yeah, you know, I, I did. Mean, yeah, I remember coming into 2.0. It was like, remember that lefty was striking everybody out in spring training? It's like, I don't know that – I don't even remember his name. Like, what was his name? You know, he wasn't on the list. It's like, maybe we ought to bring this kid in here. It just – I have so much admiration for him, what he's been through in his career. There's another one that hadn't been easy for him either, and he's had to go back a, a, a bunch to, in order to come forward. And how he's handled all that is just – it amazes me. Um just the perseverance and everything that he, this guy's been through. <clears throat> okay. Must be up to sit right here in the front. Oh, you got to get him, Dave. So what else can you say about what Rosario continues to do and how important he's been it's to this just team? It's amazing how locked in he is. I mean, it doesn't. I said it doesn't matter what arm they're throwing with. I mean, he's just so locked in. I, mean, I don't know that I've ever seen a guy like that for. This has been a long, you know, a while now that what he's been doing is just. It's been something else and. Um, Obviously, it's really cool. And like I, I think I told you earlier, it's as kind of the reports that we got from the guys in Minnesota that knew him, that they, this is a guy that you want up in a big situation. And he had a bunch of big situations in this series. Okay, far right. 
Brian, um, I actually know the answer to this because I looked it up, but do you know where you were 99 last time the Braves went to the World Series? I, yeah, Myrtle Beach. I oh. believe we won a championship in Myrtle Beach that year. Actually, yeah, <laughs> I do know. That's Yeah, I said I can't remember what I had for breakfast most days. and I remember breakfast. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> okay, down here from Snow, you would have been happy clinching anywhere, but to do it with this crowd and to have the ceremony on the this field. This was how... just perfect. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, you want to clinch, um, you know, because you're just never guaranteed tomorrow what's going to happen. But that, that was something special out there. Just the fan, the, the, that place was rocking today, has been the whole series, all year. I mean, like I say, Braves country is a real thing. It, it is a powerful, powerful element to our game and those guys said those guys appreciate that they love their fans it's amazing how they came out today and supported those guys you said that all the coaches swarmed you there at what yeah. point in time do you think you looked up and said this is real or you you know you're out there on the field tell, tell me what it happened. was you know I, I one of them was yelling in my ear and and, and um yeah I, I did I, I instead of jumping up I mean Walt grabbed me and and uh it, it took a minute honestly just to it's like, oh, my God, this is really happening. You know, um, what a special feeling, though. My God. Every, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Anything else for Snick? Well, Snick, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy See you in Houston. The All-Star game next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Braves manager Brian Snitker taking it all in as the Atlanta Braves advance to their 10th World Series appearance in franchise history. They've, of course, won three World Series titles, the last coming in 1995. Their last appearance came in 1999. It's their sixth World Series appearance since the team has been based in Atlanta. They will face the Houston Astros game one coming up on Tuesday night. We still have plenty of reaction to get to here on CBS Sports HQ. Stay with us. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.